Hi everybody, I'm Jess, your go-to Row 2 Kingdom analyst. I am so excited to be making this. This is the first time I've ever gotten to make something like this, and I, I'm very curious how it's going to go, what the discussions are going to be had with it, but what we're going to be doing is going through each of the team videos, meaning that's like that 16 second thing, promo that Mnet has launched way back a couple weeks ago. Um, and we're going to go through and talk through what are some strengths, areas of growth, what the team consists of, what their choreographic pocket is. We're just doing a full uh, overview as to what we're going to be expecting from each group. Because if you have not known this, I have marathoned every single one of these groups, including the MC, because he gets to be involved in this too. And, um, and being able to kind of know their movement qualities, who they've worked with, those types of things, to hopefully give all of us some sense of understanding as to what we could possibly expect going into the season. And if anything, it starts the conversation for what all of us uh, as admirers of the gift of dance and the K-pop scene, what, uh, what kind of things we want to enjoy out of the show. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. First up. Hey man! Now he is our MC. Honestly, probably one of the best choices of an MC. It's so simple, but so effective. Okay, what about Taman? Makes him a great MC. Well, let me tell you. Let's get a good like little shot here. Okay, there's Taman. Taman was affiliated with Shiny, a part of SM Entertainment, but now he's no longer with SM Entertainment. He is a solo artist operating out of BPM Entertainment, where if you've seen Queendom 2, Viviz is a part of that uh, organization, which is super fun. I love the fact that he is MC here, and he has a lot of influence in terms of the arsenal of tracks and uh, movement quality that has really helped uh, project some really dope changes in the industry. I would say Move is a fantastic example. You know, the boys in Road to Kingdom Season 1 used his track Danger, reworked it, and then uh, it's just in general. And then you saw SF9 and Kingdom Legendary War rework Move. And so, will a group go for it and actually do a Taman track? Well, Taman being the MC, I think that would be awesome. Just like Kepler did it, uh, Girls' Generation, the boys, and uh, Taeyeon was the MC for the second season. Um, I think that would be incredible to see. Things with uh, Taman that we've noticed with his newer work, you'll notice he has that boom bop kind of rock and bounce that he's been able to establish. He also has some really incredible movement quality on connecting phrases and being able to showcase his suave and character by having this sensual, artistic posture that I've also noticed in Ten. Um, they have some similarities there. Same company, yes, but I know Ten does look up to Taman, so I know there's a little bit of that. I am so curious as to, if anything, it's going to be uh, the Taman fan club of all of the groups going ah so I haven't I don't know if they know that he's gonna be the MC yet I hope not um, whenever they watch the first episode because I think that'll just be so fun such a highlight to see them all know that Taman out of everybody is going to be that uh, that uh, MC I think that is phenomenal oh okay so we're gonna go ahead and move on here we go we got gravity come on So short, but it's really dope. Okay, so um, right here with Kravity, we're gonna have them all look at us. We're gonna be very nice. Kravity, the track that's playing here, I believe, is Love or Die. I actually cried when I watched this on their analysis for a very specific reason. It is simply because I was very constructive on some of their previous works, then seeing MOTF's choreo on them. It was just, the track's awesome, it's on my Spotify playlist. This was such a turning point for me when it comes to a Kravity concept. I think this this type of niche of song is so good for a group like them. So with when it comes to their strengths, their numbers, the fact that they're a group of nine, odd number, you're gonna have some natural symmetry in play on a lot of their choices. They also have had some uh, some skin in the game on some different teams of choreographers. They've used Freemind, they've used Bips, as well as MOTF, but mostly Freemind, especially in their earlier works. And the pros to that is that if they have a team, like let's say if Freemind is on the on uh, their, their direction side, which I think would be really cool, um, they're gonna have that familiarity already in play, and so we don't have to like readjust to a new trainer or a new movement director because that kind of stuff can influence the overall rapport of your group um, also they are one of the only groups that I've ever marathoned where all nine members were a part of every single dance practice there wasn't somebody that was absent from that now I did hear that there were some health 
things that have happened with the group, just like all K-pop groups. Uh, but so it, it was just pretty much circumstantial as to why I was able to see them all. Um, some areas of growth are really, I think a lot of it is going to be uh, just, most of it's going to fall. Most of my notes for these groups are going to fall in the choreography teams and the movement direction teams. Depending on whether it's going to be heavy on the camera work or the audience, it's going to determine how this group is going to fare. I think they have really good charisma in their face, but... I do think some of their choreography structures are really nice and tailor well, but their their choreo looks really good on a fixed cam more times than not on a camera shot. So that's why I say that the camera versus the audience may placate towards how their choreo comes across compared to other groups that we'll get into. It's a very interesting thing to say, right? And also keep in mind, I'm very open-minded and I'm not super sold on my own perspectives on this. This is just my own observations that I've had during my time on their discography. So some tracks that I would personally want to see love or die I really love that track but the risk that comes with that is it's already done so well reworking it to still keep that intention or that beauty of what it is there's the risk that it may not land as well as it could so I really do love to see that which track would I love to see from them that I would love to see reworked or done bad habits or mammoth I think both of those had amazing potential but they kind of fell short personally to me on the choreographic structures not them the choreography structure so keep that in mind most of my notes are tailored to that not to the members so yeah so that's kind of my little overview on some pros and cons here if gravity you're watching this follow along and I'd love to do an analysis for you and if y'all want access to your marathon I will email it <laughs> no problem but yeah this was super fun I love it great song choice we're here for it moving on we have uh oh my gosh hold on unite I just finished them yesterday so here we go <laughs> I love that Day doesn't even have, uh, <laughs> what's the word? He doesn't even have like the Korean equivalents down here. Okay, so with Unite, I'm gonna make sure they're all looking at us. Unite, um, they're, they honestly, I think they received the most constructive feedback out of all the marathon groups of the month from me, and uh, most of it did come from who they were working with. So they heavy, heavy, heavy ties with Bips. So I would be surprised if Bips, if they do decide to invest in the show as a choreography team, that they don't go with Unite because of just how much skin in the game they have with each other. I like what Bips does with them. Um, but I do think that what's so fascinating about this group is that they have the opposite situation of Gravity. Their choreo looks really, really cool on camera, but when you see it in a fixed cam format, there are heavy holes in the formations and levels and dynamics that could be utilized. Now, is that on Unite? No, I actually gave this note directly to Bips. So Bips, if you're watching, that note still stands. I would love to see, I honestly, out of all teams, I would really love to see Bips with Unite because that would allow us the ability to see both teams grow, and I think it's gonna be better for them in the long run. I really like a lot of choices that are made. They tailor more towards the like gregarious tone things and their debut all the way until their most recent stuff. They only deviated from that type of gregarious concept only a couple times. I would say with Bad Cupid and then their most recent one, Geekin. Geekin was a really dope track, and I hope that we continue to explore it because they got the petty flavor of stage presence that can work very well for them. Um, so what are some areas of growth I've already kind of expressed it I would say just format of choreography in the courses I think could definitely be elevated um, and that'll naturally happen I think through the challenges hence why I want bips along for the ride because I feel like that connection is really cool and I'd love to see that maintained mm, what are some tracks that I would love to see geekin is really dope I'd love to see that one in some way if that was like the fan one fan selection I would pick geekin is really nice but also a chili pop out of all the ones I want reworked, Chili Pop, a thousand percent. That I was so constructive to that one because that one is probably the worst case of lack of formation diversity that or uh, dynamic diversity that I feel like was so vital, especially for a fan track choreo, which is what it was designed for. It was very underwhelming and definitely a huge note that I gave to Chill It, even though I did think it was Bips, which was a whole nother topic in and of itself when I realized it was not Bips, it was Chill It. Yeah, so if anything, I think that would be a really cool 
vehicle. I'd love to see that track specifically reworked. And I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about them as well. So this is really cool seeing them here. I don't quite know what the song is. It could be from anything. I think it's so fascinating that we have one of them in a darker fit and everybody else in a lighter fit. Also, yes, they are. Another big thing with them is they are operating with well, eight members and they've up until this point have operated with nine. So they will be one of like half the groups in the lineups that are operating with a different lineup than the original debut or from their most recent comeback going into the show, which is fascinating. So I don't think they've really operated without the, their ninth member. And because with their ninth member, he was the one in charge for the most part of their team choreography session. So whenever Bips or Chilla wasn't there, he was there. I think it was Young Sung, right? And so that's going to be so interesting, their dynamic as a team when they practice by themselves. Who's going to lead it? Who's going to be in charge? I have no idea. So that's going to be a very interesting dynamic that I wouldn't have known had I have not marathoned the group. So that's my, that's my overall overview of Unite. And I'm excited to meet the fan base for this group as well. Next group up, we got good old Juanes. Woohoo! Ooh, such suave characters. Just a simple look. Simple look. Now, I did kind of cheat a little bit when I was looking at these. They have a moving one, right? This is the team version. They have an ace version where they have the Hanbok fits. Those scream Luna, which is really cool, which ties in too. They are the best group to do any type of home bulk Korean cultural influence concept. That is their bread and butter. When they work with Born Black, I believe is their, their team they've worked with. It's phenomenal what ends up happening. So if anything, I want Born Black on with Oneus. I think it's a fantastic combination. And they are also operating with a group of five. But get this, they've already had experience not having um, not having their sixth member a part of it. He left at the beginning, I think it was like late, 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 late 2023 or early 2024. So they've been able to have a couple of promotions, at least two, where they did not have him. They've already reworked some choreographies as well. So they are operating more confidently as a group of five than most groups whenever they've lost a member like Unite. So what are some things, what are some strengths with them? I've already kind of stated phenomenal when it comes to the cultural side on the, the Korean cultural concepts. And I love watching them with Lit and with Luna. Luna especially. Oh my God, incredible. That would be my fan pick out of all of the tracks. Luna would be absolutely incredible. But the downside, of course, will always be they may run into a Luna, sorry, not L-U-N-A, but L-O-O-N-A problem like Luna did with Butterfly for the second season of Queendom. I loved how they reworked it, but for a lot of groups, they didn't rework it enough. But then in my head, whenever you encounter a fandom-based challenge, which I feel is going to happen, Happen, which it should happen I would I wouldn't want that type of track to be heavily reworked especially if if a fan is asking for it because most of the time they're going to be thinking about the original intention of the track hence why they want to see it done right so I would say Luna would be my go-to pick if there's any tracks from them that I would want to see reworked hmm Shut up, crazy hot. I think that would be the one that I would rework out of all of them um, because of the concept they went with, with the track and the choreography didn't quite match. And of course I have my analysis on Patreon. You can go see my itemized details with that. But to add to a potential track that I would love to see them do, and I think fans would really like to see them do, is simulation. So they only had, only was able to watch like a showcase clip of it incredible b-side for the potential of what you can do in a set you know what i mean so i would love to see them tackle that or baila comigo that one was really dope and just have glitter descending from the sky i think that would be super fun okay some things to look at with one is i would say direction wise um, they're going to run into the problem of they are going to have this extra degree of pressure because they've already been on the road to kingdom format will it be the same part of me hopes not because i want there to be an audience involved and i want audience to be influencing in the live voting because something that I think is a really big thing that I enjoyed about Queendom is that it forces those that are on stage to actually look at the audience and not neglect them for camera. And that was a really big note that I gave to some groups on the second season of Queendom because it felt like the audience wasn't getting any attention. And personally, I would feel that their voting would reflect that. But also side note, I would love to see the special judges who are like the Ajumas from down the street, you know, or the security guards. Like that to me was my favorite aspect of Queendom was the special judges like that. They don't even 
have to be like who who I am, right? They don't have to be a dancer or anything. They could just be the Ajumas. And I think that that's like, that's fantastic. And it allows it to not be as stressful. Does that make sense? They're like, at least we can get the Ajuma vote. I think that's super fun. So that's going to be my big note is there's going to be more of that pressure sense of things um, as well as operating with a group of five versus a group of six. So they've spent more time as a group of six versus a group of five, even though they've had experience not having their, their last member. So it, that'll be a very interesting dynamic to see if they do choose to, they will have to rework a couple of their songs. What will they be, what will they be um, choosing and how will they rework it? So that's a very, very fun thing to think about. All right, next one up, we have a team. And get it? There's eight of them. Love it. And they're in a nice box. Really, really cool. We're here for it. All right, with eight team, I've looked at them recently. I mean, I've looked at them all recently. Let's talk about it. So, what are their pros? Their pocket is astronomically filthy when they use Jinwoo. So, I did watch their uh, honeymoon track that, and it was structured very similarly to how Next G has done theirs in their pre debut stuff whenever they really worked with Kirsten with the drop and J Hope with Tambourine, respectively, right? And so, seeing them do that with Jinwoo, it was just, it was phenomenal, the movement quality. So I hope that they are affiliated with 82 in some way, shape, or form. And side note, I did say 88 back in the analysis, my apologies, but here, 82. I would love to see them a part of that because the pocket's really filthy. But the downside is, what you would have to keep in mind is even though I have like these go-to choreographer preferences for these groups, that doesn't mean that they're going to be good movement directors, right? It's a very different skill set, very different niche of flow. And having a camera tell a story is very different. Right? It's, choreogra it's choreographing with with a frame, not with movement, right? So I think that's a that's a very fascinating dynamic that's going to come in play. It's not going to be just the teams competing. It's their entire team. So not just those that are on the screen, but their stylists, the people who compose and rework the tracks. That's a big thing. Um, the choreographers and the familiarity we have with those choreographers and the movement directors and what what how are we going to utilize our budget? That kind of stuff. God, I hope that communication is a lot better this season than the monstrosity of Legendary War because all you want to avoid is Mnet. If you want to make sure you don't get in hot water for anything, communicate with the groups and don't start crap. <laughs> but you know, they like to do what they want to do. So that's life. Well, I'll just be putting out the fires as best as I can. So I think that is something really working for them is they have a really cool choreographic pocket for movement quality. So that's super dope. And I do like a lot of their tracks. I think their tracks are pretty cool. They are operating with a uh, with an even number. So they're going to naturally, they're, but they're familiar with operating with all of each other. They have all of their members like Kravity. So it's they're going to have that natural advantage where they don't have to rework any of their tracks because they don't have a member missing. So the line distribution is different, right? So um, what are some tracks that I would love Love to see from a turn okay so I would go with Tic Tac's a really good one I think that one would be really fun to just see not really reworked but I really like that the hats that they had maybe diving into that side of the concept would be really cool or rum pum pum I like the vibe of that and I think they could go a different direction on it but it'd still be freaking cool now I know rum pum pum was a bit of a hit or a miss for some people I really liked it and I like the choreography to it um and so either of those I think would be really fun for my personal preference to see them do I also think they could probably pull something with sketch as well. I think that one has some really cool opportunities to conceptualize in a live stage format um, that has some really cool imagery already from the get-go. So that would be a very fascinating thing to look at with them. And I do like the fact that they're in a, like a refrigerator truck. I think that's kind of cool. So I'm, I'm really pumped for A-Turn. Next up we have the crew one. Man! That'll be really fun. I'm pumped for that. Okay, so with them, with the groups as individuals like ACBO and Just B, 
different vibes, but that's what makes it exciting. Like I can see the overlap. Like ATBO still has that full out rookie energy and they can hold the old school hip hop pocket pretty decently. Um, and then you also have with uh, Just Be, I really like their rock sound. So like how they've chosen to kind of dive into the, like the Avril Lavigne angsty emo vibes, I love. Uh, yeah, such a, such a vibe. So I'm excited to see what kind of fusion. So and to be honest, I have no idea how they're gonna vibe together because uh, neither have operated with a group this large. Um, nor with the structures as such. I do know they've worked with dancers, so that's that's kind of the closest thing they've gotten. But they've had some time to acclimate themselves, which is really nice. I do know with ATB, yeah, they've worked with Auspicious for a hot minute. Just B's kind of dabbled with a couple different people, which is absolutely fine. But I, I'm very intrigued on how this is going to operate, what track they would pick if they have to pick, like, what... What track encompasses the sound of the group? Are they going to pick a Just B or are they going to pick an ATBO track? I have no idea. Um, some songs that I would love to hear from both of them. With ATBO, I would say Attitude's really cool. And also, side note, I could see Oneus. If Oneus has to exchange with Crew One, Oneus could use that song, Attitude, and pull what they did with Luna and what they did with Lit. Because it sounds like a hybrid of the Korean cultural elements and like modern fits. That to me, I think would be one of the dopest plays that would happen in the show that I would be so satisfied in watching take place. So that would happen in the challenge wherever they have to switch songs. If one is gets crew one, that would be my vote. I would tell them, hey, you need to pick that one out of all of their discography on both sides. Would just be, I really liked, um, I liked Youth a lot. That one was really cool. I would also say Damage was wild. And also Get Away, like crazy to me. Like I that is so freaking in your face. And I think that's why it just feels so like, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's so aggressive, but I think that would be such a great concept to do on the show. Like you would really help on the performance side on the camera work for sure. So who would they have as a choreographer? I really couldn't tell you. I could see Auspicious getting involved. Um, you can get it, really anybody. You can pull a BB Trippin at some point maybe, I don't know. Because with a lot of these groups, they have, there's, they, there's some overlapping choreographers depending on the track, which is cool, but also you would run into the problem of, Will that team go with one group over another? Will they work at all? I have no idea. I'm just placing my bets. But I could see Auspicious being a name thrown out for the crew one just because of their affiliation on the discography with ATBO. Um, what are some what are some pros? They all can hold it down very well in their own respective roles. And there this is the first time we've ever had a unit like this where it's two groups put together. This never happened on the Kingdom Queendom side. It makes me very excited. Unless it happens in the Queendom puzzle, I don't know. But it makes me very excited to see what kind of dynamic takes place with that. And uh, I would say they also have with DY, he has heavy experience in lyrics and composition. So that can help them in some of the reworking process on some of the tracks, which is super, super cool. So I'm, I'm totally here for this. I really enjoyed both of their marathons and it was really fun. All right, we have the new six. Theirs, I think, was the shortest marathon I did. And there's six of them. Get it? Ha ha ha. Nice. Burr. So fun. Okay, so with the new six, they, they okay, so to start out, I think if we were to do a switch where people would pick, new six could pick Oneus because Oneus's line distribution is really tailored to a group of six, which could be very helpful for them. And, but you would run into the comparison train, but you will experience that anyway. So that's really fun. Theirs was the shortest for me, but also they're a little wild card in my honest opinion. I think what's gonna, part of it is going to be, are they gonna get MOTF involved as their, as their go-to group? Because MOTF has had skin in the game on Kravity, with them extensively. They've also done one of, I think it was, oh my God, was a Tempest. I think they did one of Tempest tracks too. I, I forgot maybe, uh, but they, they've, they've dabbled and, and won us too. So it's like not, not the first rodeo in seeing them, um, affiliated. Well, I don't know if they did. No, I think they did. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I, I have a spreadsheet that has all of this on there. So I'm just going off the top for myself, but they have most of their tracks have MOTF affiliation. So that would be my gut. That would be a really good option. And MOTF choreo, like not going to lie, 
freaking wild. I love MOTF choreography. I think they're like a personal preference and how it's structured to the tracks, but whether or not they can hold it down a movement direction is another thing. A great example is Mihawk. His time with the boys on Road to Kingdom and Kingdom Legendary War worked very well because of his usage of heavy camera work, but I think it worked against Kepler during their final performance because it was so heavy on the camera that I felt like the audience was neglected in the rehearsal and in the final show. And I, get, I said all of this in the Queendom 2 side of things. So with this group, I could, I would love to see Fuego's really cool. Um, it's, it's, it's their newest one too. So I think that one, it has like a really nice suaveness. I think they can really go ham on that. So that would be my personal preference to see in here. I would also say Move is very nice. So literally the bookends of their, their discography, I could see them do a lot with. Um, yeah, I, I'd say they can also, they can handle just bees i think they would be able to do a just bee track very well like the early works of just bee stuff would be very fascinating to see what would happen on the new six so i, I that's kind of like my little overview with the group and um it makes me it makes me excited to see what they bring to the table being you know i mean none of these groups are inherently like super super new like none of them are pulling like kepler new like within a year do you know what i mean i feel which i think is great <laughs> because everybody has enough discography that you can actually do something with so i think that's like my that was my biggest note with mnet having kepler and queendom too not because they were incapable but because they really didn't set them up for success because they didn't have a huge discography and they didn't really have like their own brand or their own like direction of what brand they wanted to go with you know so i think that's my that's my big note for 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 that so i'm happy that with all the groups the youngest is in 2023 which i think is mighty fine and finally we got the good old tempest i love that they have little like they have the confetti I thought that was super, super fun. Okay, pros with Tempest. They have Vroom Vroom. <laughs> that, that mess was freaking hard. Like, I love the vibe of that. I really enjoyed it. I think they do Weed'em Boys pretty well. And I so I could I could see if, if out of everybody, I think Weed'em Boys would be a really good option for this group. Um, big note for them is they are operating as a group of six. They haven't had any comebacks. They've had to calibrate dance practices, but they hadn't had a comeback that's specifically tailored to a group of six here right so i think that would be a really big thing to know on the group dynamics they're going into an even number they they've operated as an odd for a long time now the question would be is it easier to go from an odd to an even or an even to an odd i could not answer that for you because part of it comes from I would say it depends on the line distribution and who is no longer a part of the group. There's so many different things and also who's the team that you've normally worked with choreographically and how much of a how much of a workshopping nightmare is it going to be to convert all the formations and things of the like. So that would be my in general note with with all of that. But I'm very excited for this group. I think uh, let me see. So some songs I would really like to just see here, Vroom Vroom, I think it's a really dope choreo, really dope concept that I would love to see brought to life in this format. Um, I would also love to see Can't Stop Shining. That one's such a fun one, really enjoyed that. Uh, but one that I would love to see that had like such a, a, such a like, I was left wanting so much more than what I was given was Baddest Behavior. Now that track is a Japanese track, so part of me would want that to be converted to Korean for the show, but rework the choreo because a lot of my notes, when it comes to marathon finales, unfortunately Tempest is the recipient of the most disappointing marathon finale because, and it's not their fault, it is mostly because of the format of the choreography that they were given. And it wasn't because of we were no longer having one of our members there. It wasn't that. It was already looking that way in the music videos because that member was a part of the music videos but not in the dance practices, right? Also, side note, they've worked with MOTF too with Lighthouse. So that they've had they've had some skin in the game on various different choreographers. I really like Can't Stop Shining. It's a really good choreo on them. And I would say some of them, um, I think I have a movement catfish in one of in this group specifically. I remember saying it because it's a uh, it's uh, it really it really threw me off guard. Hyuk here um he uh, he really threw me off on one of the choreos was it was i don't oh which one was it 
Haruman is when I it really was caught off guard by Hyuk's movement quality specifically so I found that interesting also whenever I was looking back there is one track that they have of baddest behaviors not on not an option because it's a Japanese release for just looking at the Korean releases they have one called dive that one has a heavy waving influence on it but a bit on the mm, underdeveloped side so I would love to see that one reworked and reintroduced I think would be super cool but if you want like the most block B niche track like if you want to pull like a pentagon um and pull a block b kind of track i would have them do freak show that one's a really cool one they could do a lot with it but once again the biggest the biggest thing is going to be converting any track that they do on their own discography converting it from an odd number to an even number in formation structure as well as in the line distribution so that's a that's a big kicker in all of that so I think who would I want? Um, who would I want Tempest to work with? They they have used Lit, a Lit, pretty often. Um, so I could see them being a contender of working with the group. Um, and I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind that. I really have no qualms with really with with any of these groups working with anyone. I think it's going to be fun. But I just really hope that everybody invests the same degree that the groups do because that's the worst thing is if the group really wants to go for it, but let's say the stylist or those that do the composition or the company does not put any support behind it, it's a struggle bus on all fronts. You noticed it with Icon, you noticed it with, uh, oh my gosh, who else was it? I would say Brave Girls, they were pretty self-sufficient. Um, and, and in a way where it's like, I always love, I always love it where like people are set up for success. So I, that's what I'm hoping for that everybody has all guns blazing, full investment on all fronts. And I love the fact that I could even make this. I, I hope that I'm able to be helpful in some way to where this is actually going to be a positive contribution to the conversation. Um, and I've never made one of these before. So if this is lame, let me know and I won't make one again. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. Uh, so my top picks for Kingdom is I don't have a top pick. I mean, I don't think that's the right thing to think about right now in this moment because we have no idea how any of these groups are going to be competing. Um, and just because one group may have more experience than another when it comes to their discography, concepts, uh, their choreography team, any of those things, we're not really going to know how each group does until we see them in their challenges. Because I've seen on every single season every single group is going to have a performance that is phenomenal and every single group is going to have a performance that is very constructive it has worked that way across the board and if you're like Jess what do you mean all of it's on patreon all of my notes all of my analysis on row to kingdom kingdom legendary war queen of one and queen of two respectively and um and some of them have been able to make their way onto youtube but most have not as you've noticed so i'm really hopeful that i don't run into many copyright issues on this but i want to hear from you and you and you can and we can have the conversation in a couple of places. Firstly, I would love to hear who are you a fan of if you're a fan of any group or uh, which group are you the most intrigued about going into the show? I'd love to hear that and also if this group has a fandom name, I'd love to learn it. If I hadn't already had it on my radar, I uh, hadn't had that opportunity to know as much. Um, because I was just doing a deep dive on the dance practices and music videos. And then if you're somebody that's like, Jess, I want to be a part of this with you, alongside you, as you watch the episodes, so we can all contribute collectively and grow together. I would say Patreon is the perfect place to do that and you do not have to be a paying member to be a part of it. I'm going to have a large group chat that takes place that you can be a free member to be a part of. It's affiliated to anybody who is a member of my Patreon, regardless if you pay or not. And it's going to have all of the videos that are early released, like this one, is all going to go up there first. Um, and for the episodes, we're going to talk and discuss through there, as well as the analysis, just in a safer environment where we can all have kind of like a common place where we understand that it's not really about the topic toxicity that's going to naturally take place on an Mnet formatted show, but it's about the celebration of the art of dance and the performances and the growth of the performers. And so if that's something that you want to be a part of, that is a perfect place to do it. Um, and I'm very, very much looking forward to meeting so many different people alongside you guys. Being in a real-time kingdom show, I, this is such a special time for me, and I think, think it's such a blessing and very timely, uh, the fact that I have the opportunity to do this. So very much looking forward to meeting you all. You guys know me. I know you. I'm Jess, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.